Welcome to this live webinar on overview of MBD well designed by Mr. Nitin Kulkarni, drilling engineer with specialization in MPD and UVT techniques. Thank you for joining in this workshop. Now, without wasting any further time, I would like Sir Nitin Kulkarni to start this introductory session. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, uh, Niharika. Thank you, uh, Nikhil. Uh, am I audible? Are you able to hear me? Yeah, it's perfect, sir. Okay, good. So uh, thank you very much for organizing this webinar and uh, have a, a, you know, greetings to all the participants. Uh, thank you for uh, joining uh, this session. Uh, just to give you a quick background uh, of me, uh, basically, I used to work as an MPD engineer before uh, with Weatherford and then briefly with Slumberger. And then later on, I joined uh, oil companies uh, where we were actually uh, deciding on whether we can use MPD on certain wells. So initially, we were from the I was in the service side, then actually in the oil side where we could utilize this technology. So that way, I had uh, an opportunity to see uh, both sides of the be on both sides of the table. Where one is when when you propose uh, to use this technology to drill a particular section of the well, and then you also are on the other side where you get the feedback and you discuss with the management, you make a proposal to uh, basically get the approval to see if the management is interested or, or and you know is going to approve this, the geoscience team, the completions team, everybody in the oil company needs to agree before we can go ahead. Uh, this involves a certain modification to the conventional uh, method. Now, uh, uh, today's webinar is an overview of well designed. So we focus on on the well design aspect, you know, assuming that we are going to drill uh, a well, a particular section of the well using MPD, uh, we will uh, basically, <clears throat> what we will, uh, we will review certain aspects of what changes we need to do in uh, the uh, in the particular well design. So, so certain changes are to be incorporated. And as uh, this is usually uh, important when you are uh, in the beginning phase, but if you, as you move along and as you uh, as you develop uh, this technology for your field, for your drilling operations, then these things become part of the routine procedure. But this is particularly important when you are doing it for the first time, when you are doing it in the very initial phase. Uh, and as I said, you know, if you have uh, doing multiple wells, then on the second well, third well, fourth well, uh, you know, this become, these, are, these all become routine procedures and everybody becomes familiar. Generic procedures may be available with you, but we need to write specific procedures. We need to get them approved because whatever you are going to do during uh, an MPD operation uh, needs to be uh, in the form of a procedure. And this needs to be approved by your client. If you are the client, then you need to approve it. You need to go through it with your service company and ensure that they are quite aligned. Uh, keep in mind that your drilling contractor should be also involved in this at all times because a lot of these procedures will require his uh, involvement and his uh, uh, in terms of interface. So, uh, procedures can be broadly classified into three different steps, you know, uh, startup procedures, operational procedures, contingency procedures. So, these are the three things, you know. Startup procedures are typically MPD system, uh, pressure testing, fingerprinting, encasing test, fingerprinting, encasing test, testing all the sensors, MPD will introduce a whole lot of new sensors, down all and surface sensors. You need to test them to make sure that they're functioning. Recording MPD system pressure losses, we just discussed about it, that we need to record this for different flow rate to make sure that you're aware about where this 50, 60 PSI is coming from, that you will, you will see in the system. Then you have, you have to calibrate pump efficiency. This is typically done on the rig all the time, but <clears throat> With MPD system, we have an opportunity to calibrate using your flow meter. So you, sir, uh, your input is your calculation from the pumps, output is your flow meter, and you check your flow in and flow out and accordingly adjust your pump efficiency. This is done in casing, so you know your system, uh, your, everything is within the loop and you are not losing any formation, uh, any, any fluid to the formation, or you are not gaining anything from the formation. So if there is a difference between flow, your calculated flow in and your measured flow out, uh, measured flow out, you need to match them together. So this is done at the beginning. So uh, that as you go along, if you see any anomaly, if you see any changes, variation in the two, you will uh, 
you will uh, 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 consider this as a down hole issue. Then you compare your calibration data with your PWD data. PWD is pressure while drilling sensor that uh, is used while uh, drilling. Uh, it basically gives you down hole uh, pressure, bottom hole pressure that we have been talking about all the time. It measures uh, bottom hole pressure and it also calculates ECD down hole with the tool. Now, why you need to calibrate this is because sometimes this tool can fail. Also, sometimes this tool doesn't record data. At that time, you are relying on your calculated pressures that we just discussed, but the calculations in real world are done by your software in real time basis. So the usually you have your bottom hole pressure data, which is measured by a PWD tool, which is like part of the LWD system, but you also have to calibrate your uh, model because then if something goes wrong with your tool, or during connections or any other time when you're not circulating, your calibrated model will uh, be the only source for you to give you your bottom hole pressure data, which as you know, as we've been discussing, is very important to, to maintain and manage. Now, the pipe moment is for the swab and surge pressure, losses and influx, uh, the system needs to detect this. Uh, that has been the main objective, one of the main objectives of MPD, so, but we need to simulate this by uh, you know measuring this. And uh, then uh, your flow behavior no? in the system, how it how how it behaves when you turn your pump off, what happens when you turn your pump on, and so on. So, so this is uh, typically how you uh, start off with an MPD project. Now there are operational procedures. You remember we classified it into three different steps. One is your startup, one is your operational, and then your contingency. So in your operational procedures, you have uh, normal things that you do when your RCD bearing assembly that needs to be removed. You need to close your annular preventer because you may uh, end up having a uh, you know lower density fluid, and when you remove your RCD bearing assembly, you lose pressure in the well that has been applied to the surface. So you need to uh, you need to remove your RCD bearing assembly. Yeah, MPD connections. You know, uh, when you do MPD connections, you need to increase the surface back pressure. And uh, uh, basically, <clears throat> this is done needs to be done in coordination with your uh, uh, driller. He, 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 when he turns his pumps off, you, you increase your uh, uh, surface back pressure at the time to compensate for your friction pressure loss during the connections or at any time when your pumps are off. So you need this has to be a procedure that you need to write down the number of steps that you are going to take. And it needs to be done well coordinated, otherwise it will not work properly. You also remember you need to turn off your back pressure pump uh, because the system needs to have flow in it. So this needs to be done uh, as a procedure. Uh, the other thing that you do is you do flow checks. Now flow checks are different uh, in um, MPD as compared to your conventional drilling. Why is it different? Because you have a closed system, you have a flow meter, uh, you don't have an open system to the shell shaker. Your flow returns are going to MPD system and are measured by your uh, Coriolis meter. So when you stop the pumps, uh, you, you, need to, you need to have a procedure to measure flow. You know, you can do dynamic, you can do static. There are multiple ways of doing flow checks, but typically it is different from your conventional flow checks. Most of them who are in drilling operations know the importance of flow check, and it is important to know this procedure as it will be, it will vary from uh, how it is uh, in conventional drilling. Displacing well to lighter fluid. Now, this is typically done in MPD. When you drill out the shoe, you check for flow. Uh, you Once you're in open formation, usually one of the objectives of MPD is to drill with a lighter fluid as compared to conventional drilling. Let's say you are planning to drill a nine and a quarter inch hole section and uh, you had a, a, a 14 ppg mud system plan. Now, when you're dis discussing uh, MPD, you would you typically want to deal with the lighter mud system. One is that you save your mud cost. Second is that you uh, try to drill, uh, you know, see if you can drill with a lighter fluid without having any issues in the well, but you have an MPD system to protect you in case if you do get uh, uh, into an issue. So, but you need to displace to a lighter fluid. You don't usually start drilling with a lighter fluid. You drill with a normal uh, fluid and then you displace to the lighter fluid, you know. So, uh, you, when you displace to the lighter fluid, uh, you, you cannot do it all of a sudden. You need to compensate it uh, you know, you typically uh, have your equivalent mud weight in the well, equivalent to 14 ppg, and then you slowly, slowly shift to 13 ppg and then 12 ppg in order to ensure that you don't get any uh, uh, surprises from the well. So there is a procedure for that. And you do it in stages. 
Uh, what do you do it on the fly? You know, you cannot consume too much time doing all these things. So it needs to be done in a very optimal way. Similarly, kick detection, well controlled procedures are also uh, uh, to be mapped. There are some things, what is, there is something what is called as formation integrated as FIT, which uh, most of you might be aware about. But in MPD, you use a different procedure called dynamic FIT. There is a dynamic coefficient determination. There is a slow circulation rates that you take in MPD. While tripping, there are some procedures. Uh, all of this are to be documented. And this is where, if you notice, uh, we said three to two to three weeks is required to complete your MPD program. So writing these procedures is also part of the program. And this is where uh, uh, sometimes time is consumed. Why? Because you are interfacing with your customer or you're going through them and you're making changes to it uh, to suit everybody's requirements. And then the last thing is the contingency procedures. Why contingency procedures? Is because uh, uh, sometimes things can go wrong in your MPD systems and uh, you need to define and document, you know, as to how you are going to how you're going to address this. If there is a power failure, if there's equipment failure, if you have a kick from the well, you have lost circulation, you have your choke plug, you have your RCD element failure, uh, uh, NRV, that is a drill string non random valve failure. So when you have all of this, uh, all of this uh, basically going on in the well, uh, you will uh, normally have uh, uh, to activate one of the contingency procedures. Uh, let's talk about uh, dynamic well control, which is the last topic of this today's webinar. Um, uh, basically, definition of MPD is something that we saw in the right in the beginning. So what happens is in conventional drilling, uh, I think this is just a repetition of what we discussed uh, in, the, in, a, in a diagram, in a, in a form of a diagram uh, in this case. But um, let's have a quick look at it as a recap, maybe. You know? So you have these three components in MPD that you're managing. And if something goes wrong in the well, you essentially just increase the surface back pressure as it is shown here. If you get an influx or a gain from the well, you increase your surface back pressure provided uh, that it is it does not exceed any of the limits in the well. And this is a typical example of a well control matrix. Uh, you know, what happens here is, uh, what happens here is <coughs> you uh, define your limits now, this well control matrix is based on uh, your rotation of 200 rpm and when uh, you have zero to, uh, when your surface pressure is 0 to 600 psi and uh, you know if you're drilling in, in safe uh, condition you, you don't have any influx then you're good to go you can continue to apply that pressure if your surface back pressure increases from 600 to 1200 psi then you are in this yellow zone where you have to reduce the rotational speed or increase your mud density because you're like this 1200 PSI uh, is is your limit of surface back pressure. So you are reaching the limit of your surface back pressure in this case. So in order to the, the surface back pressure, in order to have sufficient margin, uh, you need to either increase your mud weight gradually or you have to reduce your rotational speeds. Now RPM is also a function of your surface back pressure. The, the equipment manufacturer will give you a chart where it says uh, an RCD manufacturer will give you a chart against uh, your RPM uh, to say that at particular RPM, this much would be the maximum surface back pressure. Yeah. So influx, if you have an influx less than three, bar three barrels and you continue uh, operations, increase surface back pressure to displace influx and after influx displacement set maybe equivalent mud weight. Uh, basically, so that you may make sure that your uh, influx is contained and you are still in the green zone uh, you, uh, since your influx limit is you have detected it as less than three barrels. What happens if your influx increases to more than uh, three barrels? Now you are in your red zone. That means uh, you need to pick up a bottom. Uh, you, MPD will trap pressure. Then you check your BOP and then you activate your well control procedure from the rig. So this is where you define your limits of MPD system using this matrix and that if you observe a gain that is more than three barrels, you typically switch over to conventional well control uh, procedure, which most of uh, you would have, uh, you know, studied in any of the well control schools. Uh, that is either a drillers method or weight on weight method, whichever is uh, approved by the company, you just go for that and you uh, typically, uh, basically uh, <coughs> control the well. Now, there is influx volume uh, limit here, 
uh, you have a normal operating limit, you have your plan limit. Normal limit is that if your influx is less than three barrels, you can continue if your plan limit is, if it exceeds three barrels, as we just discussed, you know. Also, there is a pressure limit, uh, 1200 PSI, uh, and if your RPM is below uh, 120. So these are all the factors that you take into account when you define your well control matrix. This is done when you're doing your well planning. If you're in your if you're in the field operation, then you will uh, you know get this data, or you'll be invited into some of the meetings where you can give your inputs and uh, discuss about various limits, uh, pressure limits in the well bore, pressure limits of the surface equipment, and make sure that at any given time we are not exceeding any of this to create another issue in the well. So, uh, what is dynamic well control? Basically, uh, you would have heard this term. Uh, what happens is if your uh, flow out increases, uh, <clears throat> then then you're uh, basically you you you're, you increase your uh, surface back pressure to match it with the flow in and balance the well by keeping your drill pipe pressure constant. But you need to determine your surface pressure limit and you need to calculate your new mud weight and you need to also work on displacing the well to new mud weight. So if you have increased your surface back pressure by 200 or 300 PSI uh, in order to balance your flow in and flow out, at the same time, you need to work with increasing your mud weight by let's say half PPG or 0.7 PPG or 1 PPG in the well, and then accordingly displace the well. But usually this process, as you know, is time consuming. So, uh, but you may still have to work on it and displace the well to new mud, mud weight, uh, such that you can go back on your surface back pressure uh, limit and you can have sufficient margin in the well. So while uh, the, the typical kick warning signs are uh, uh, while drilling, while tripping, and uh, while MPD in surface back pressure mode, these are very similar to what you have uh, while conventional drilling. But only thing is that it provides you additional tools, such as your flow meter uh, and your cumulative volume, all that. This is a typical decision tree that we have in MPD. Uh, we have one more decision tree, but this is just this is just one decision tree. And in in this case, if you see here, uh, while you are drilling, what happens if you detect an influx that is your flow out is greater than flow in? So you increase uh, a influx greater than uh, three barrels or surface back pressure greater than twelve hundred psi. You know, uh, I want so you shut the well in. And you, uh, in this case, if you see, you guys might be familiar with this. Uh, there is hard shutting and soft shutting. But in this case, in this matrix, it is clearly defined. It needs to be hard shutting and circulate influx out to to Riggs pore void degasser, holding standby pressure constant. As we were just discussing, uh, procedure has already been defined here before we even commence any operation with MBD. And then what happens? You know, uh, what do you do after that? You know, ECD management with surface back pressure, yes, possible then you increase your ECD with surface back pressure. No, increase mud weight, uh, enabling uh, drilling to appropriate surface back pressure uh, you know, to balance the pore pressure. Now, this is how a decision tree is defined in the beginning. This is just an example, but this would be part of your well-designed process where you decide what you are going to do uh, you know, in the event of an influx or a kick. If your influx is smaller, then you can circulate your influx using your MPD system through your rigs degasser who went out the gas. There is another uh, evo uh, evolution uh, of this well control matrix, which has been now, there are four parameters that have been taken into consideration. There is Excel spreadsheets, there is softwares available, uh, but there is something what is called as influx management em envelope. Now influx management envelope is uh, nothing but a plot that you have just seen, you will see uh, where it basically takes into account in, in initial influx volume and uh, post-influx surface pressure. Uh, so primary uh, uh, barrier uh, of influx, uh, you know, what happens is if you are in this yellow zone, uh, you, you can circulate your kick using your while keeping your primary barrier. By primary barrier, they are saying that MPD system, your existing mud system in the well. If you, if you are in this red zone, then you need to use your secondary barrier. Now, Secondary barrier for here entails use of Riggs BOP system, Riggs choke manifold, and uh, the Riggs procedures. 
that is your Dillers method or weight on weight method. So essentially, this matrix defines uh, taking into account the initial influx volume. If you see the plot here, you have your on the y-axis initial influx volume, and you have your post-influx surface pressure. Now it plots these data uh, uh, and decides whether you can circulate your influx out. Uh, basically using your MPD system or you need to switch to your RIGS conventional system and it is a, it's an envelope and so it will be, uh, you know, across certain parameters. Then if you see here, there is a green zone on the top. So if you are in that green zone, that means you are in the safe zone and you can uh, continue. So uh, basically it determines the pressure limit as a function of influx volume, influx intensity and a combination of uh, these things and decides whether you need to use your secondary well control to control the well. There is another uh, area, uh, basically now in this case, this particular envelope, there is an orange area, if you can see, where uh, it's a subset of the yellow area and the orange area, uh, basically in orange zone and influx can still be safely removed with the primary barrier, uh, basically, uh, but we need to modify certain things, you know, uh, to bring, go back to the yellow limit. You know, an example would be the need need to reduce uh, pump speed uh, if possible you know, uh, to go back into uh, the yellow zone. So this is one of the one of the scenarios in an influx uh, management envelope. But usually, typically, the software nowadays that are available for designing MBD would incorporate this in it. So you would get a chance to play with it and decide uh, the different parameters. Now, here is another uh, uh, what, I, what I would say, you know, it's a decision matrix where uh, if you, de you decide what, how you would do and if you would like to apply and referring to the influx management envelope, whether you are in your red zone, orange zone, or yellow zone. Here is another one which I took from uh, one of the SP papers uh, where they are talking about a weak point based on uh, an influx of 10 barrel, 20 barrel, and the equipment limit line, you know or influx volume um, based on and, and post influx uh, surface pressure. And then here you see there is, a, there is a, there's a line which talks about peak intensity and based on the intensity, 20 barrels, 10 barrels and the weak line, the equipment limit, you, you decide uh, uh, how your pressures are, uh, you know, how you would basically uh, operationally control a uh, well control situation. Uh, if you are in the yellow zone, you can use your MPD system. If you are in the red zone, you need to go to the uh, conventional well control methodology. So this was pretty much uh, what we had discussed today in today's webinar. And with this, if you guys have any questions, uh, I would be happy to answer. Uh